Hello and welcome to Thermodynamics 2 tutorials with Maria. We're going to be solving a rack and cycle wheel regeneration that has an open feed water heater and also a closed feed water heater. So we are given a problem with different values. We also are given all the entropies and we are asked to find the um, cycle efficiency assuming first that we have a closed feed water heater and then assuming that we have an open feed water heater. So this is how our process diagram looks like, and we're going to start by drawing our TS diagram. So we're going to have our entropy and temperature and our vapor dome or curve. And let's start at number two, where we know it's going to be in a superheated state. We're going to be in our high pressure line, so that's going to be two. Then what is happening is that we're going to go um, through the expansion of the first turbine, then a fraction of the flow is going to go to the uh, expansion of the second turbine, and the rest of the fraction of the flow is going to go to the closed feed water heater. So what it's going to look like is we're going to go down uh, to the low pressure line that is happening in the high pressure turbine, so it's going to be number three. Then we're going to go down to the condenser, so it's going to be four. Then after four, we're going through the pump. Uh, well, after the condenser, we're going to five. We're going to be in the liquid state, and then the liquid is going to get pumped to six, so we're going to go to the higher pressure. Then what is happening in a closed feed water heater is that we have two flows that are going through which are not mixing. So we have the flow from six to one that is going through the pipes. And then the flow from three to A is going through the shell. And why are we doing this? Is because we want to use the energy from three to A to heat up the flow from six to one without mixing. Um, we also have to remember that there's no pressure change in the closed feed water heater, so we're always staying in the same pressure line. So from 3 to A, we're going to go back here, that's going to be A, in the same pressure line as 3, and the energy from 3 to A is used to heat up the energy, the flow from 6 to 1. So what we know is that 1 is going to be at a higher temperature of 6, and it's still going to be... Um, in this side of the, of the curve. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the boilers. It's going to get heat up. And then what is happening here in A is that because we're going to have the condensation of the vapor around um, the, the pipes where the flow from 6 to 1 is going, um, we're going to have some liquid and we're going to have a two-phase mixture. And we only want the vapor going in the condenser so we're going to use a steam trap in order to remove all the liquid. And that is going to make us go back, in some way, we're not sure how, to the condenser pressure. And this is how our TS uh, diagram look, looks like. For So now let's write the equation for the cycle efficiency, which is equal to the work net over the heat input. The work net is the work output that we have produced minus the work input. So it's going to be the work done by the high pressure turbine plus the work done by the low pressure turbine minus the work of the pump over the heat input in the boiler. Let's write the equation for each one of the components. So the work of the high pressure turbine is going to be equals to H2 minus H3. A little trick you can remember is that a turbine is going to produce energy. So we know that the energy at 3 is going to be lower from the energy at 2. At the low pressure turbine, we know that we have a fraction of the flow going in. So it's going to be 1 minus y times h3 minus h4. Then the work of the pump. In this case, we are inputting um, energy to compress the fluid. So we know that state 6, we're going to have a higher energy than state 5. 
So it's going to be H6 minus H5. And the heat at the boiler, the same concept as the pump, we know it's going to be H2 minus H1. We do have all the entropies for all the states, but we need to find the mass fraction. If we look at the closed fit water heater, we see that we have the flow coming from 3 going to A um, with a mass fraction of Y. And we say that we are taking that energy in order to put it in the flow from 6 to 1. So what does it mean is that we have the mass fraction times H3 because we're going to have a higher energy than at A. So it's going to be H3 minus HA. And this energy, we're going to input it in the flow from 6 to 1. So that means that, means that at 1, we're going to have a higher energy than at 6. So the temperature is going to be higher. And it's going to be H1 minus H6. And we already said that it's going to be 100% in the um, mass fraction. So this is going to be equals to 1. And then what we can assume, we can assume that HA, it's very, very, very close to the entropy at 1. And then we can find the mass fraction of, it's going to be equals to H at 1 minus H at 6 over H3 minus H1. And that is going to give us a value for Y of two, 0 0.268. And now we can just plug in all the numbers and find the values for the work done of, at each component. So the work of the high pressure turbine is going to be equal to 645 kilojoule per kilogram. The work of the low pressure turbine, we find the value of Y. We already have the entropies for 3 and 4, so it's just a matter of plugging it in. And then we're going to find 525.3 kilojoule per kilogram. Then the work at, at the pump is going to be 10.1 kilojoule per kilogram. And then the heat input at the boiler is going to be equal to 2,739.3 kilojoule per kilogram. And we can see here, just looking at the numbers, why we can neglect the work uh, input in the pump, because it's so small compared to the work of the turbines. Um, and then if we just plug in all the numbers again in our cycle efficiency equation, we're going to find it's going to be equal to 0 0.424 or 42.4%. Now we're going to jump into the second part of the problem where we are asked to assume that the cycle is using an open feed water heater. This is how the process diagram looks like. And as we did for the first part, we're going to start by drawing the uh, TS diagram. So this is going to be our vapor dome. And we're also going to start at number two because we know that it's going to be our high pressure and it's going to be in a superheated state. It's going to be number two is going to be around here. Then we know that the fluid is exiting the boiler as a um, vapor. And then the vapor, the steam, is going to get expanded in the first turbine. Then we're going to have a division of the uh, flow. There's going to be some of the steam that is going to go to the open feed water heater. And the rest is going to be to the expansion of the second turbine. So we're going to go to the expansion of the first turbine. This is going to be number three. Then we're going to go um, to the expansion of the low pressure turbine that is going to the condenser. This is going to be our low pressure of the condenser, so it's going to be four. In the condenser, we're having a phase change, so it's going back to liquid phase. Therefore, it's going to be around here. And then we're going to pump the liquid, so we're going to go high in pressure to 6. So what is happening here is that we have steam coming, a fraction of the steam going to the open feed water he heater. And it's going to mix with the compressed fluid exiting uh, the pump. And we're doing this because we want to heat up the fluid before it goes back to the boiler. 
So then we're going to have the fraction of the um, stem coming from 3. So it's going to go from here to 7. It's going to get mixed with the fluid coming from 6. So we're going to reach a higher temperature in the same pressure line. And then we need to pump again this uh, fluid. So we're going to go up to the higher pressure line. Uh, this is going to be 1. And then we're going to go back to the boiler. Therefore, if we write this like y, there's going to be y coming here, and 1 minus y here. We're going to sum now the equation for the cycle efficiency, which we know is going to be the work net over the heat input. And the work net is going to be the work done by both of the turbine minus the work input in both of the pump over the heat input in the boiler. Let's write the equation for each one of the components. The work of the high pressure turbine, we know that it's going to be 100% of the, of the fluid coming in and going through the expansion. Therefore, it's going to be H2 minus H3. In the second turbine, in the low pressure turbine, we're going to have, after the expansion of the first turbine, we have a split of the fluid. So there's steam, a fraction of the steam is going to go to the open feed water heater, and the rest is going to go to the second turbine. Therefore, it's going to be 1 minus Y times H3 minus H4. And then after the, tur the second turbine, the fluid won't get split again. So in the pump, in the first pump, we're still going to have a fluid fraction of 1 minus y. So the work input in the first turbine is going to be 1 minus y times h6 minus h5. In the second pump, we know that we're going to have 100% of the fluid going in the pump. Why? Because if we look at the open feed water heater, we have two inputs. There's one of the inputs that comes with a fluid fraction of y, and the second input with a fluid fraction of 1 minus y. And therefore, if we do the addition, the output is going to be at 100%. So the work of the second pump is going to be h1 minus h7, and the heat in the boiler is going to be H2 minus H1. And now we need to solve uh, for Y. And we just need to find the energy equation of the open feed water heater. So as I said before, we're going to have two inputs, one output. And the energy equation says that everything coming in comes out because we have a control volume. Therefore, if we look at the first one coming in, we know it's going to be Y uh, times the entropy at 3, plus 1 minus y, times the entropy at 6, is going to be equal to h7. If we solve for y, we're going to find it's going to be equal to h7 minus h6 over h3 minus h6. We have the values for all these entropies. We just need to plug in now. And we can find the value of y of uh, 0 0.2141. And now we are ready to go back to our equations and plug in on the numbers in order to find the cycle efficiency. Uh, for the first turbine, we have a work of 645 kilojoule per kilogram. For the second turbine, we're going to have 563.96 kilojoule per kilogram. The first pump is going to be equal to 0 0.7859 kilojoule per kilogram. The second pump is going to be equal to 10.1 
kilojoule per kilogram. The heat input in the boiler is equal to 2,729.3 kilojoule per kilogram. And if we go back to our cycle efficiency, we're going to find that it's going to be equal to 0 0.434 or 43.4%.